Okay, so today we're doing 10-4 and 10-5. 10-4 is coordinate proof using distance with quadrilateral. And that may sound like a lot, but it is not anything different than what we did on Friday in 10-1 and 10-2. We are using slope and distance formula to prove that things are whatever it asks, parallelograms, there might be rectangles, squares, um, might be kites, um, trapezoids, rhombus, whatever it happens to be. So in this one, a parallelogram, parallelogram means that we need to show that opposite, uh, well, let me say, show that one pair of opposite sides is both parallel and congruent. So now I'm going to pick uh, side AB and side CD. And you could draw this if you need to. Um, but I'm going to do these without drawing them. I'll draw this first one and then I'm not going to draw them anymore. If you need to uh, just pause Pause the tape and draw it out. Um, let's see. A is at 3, 2. B is at 8, 2. C is at 5, one, two, 0. And D is at 0, 0. And you can see here that AB is across from CD. I could have picked AD and BC, but it's kind of nice this way because the numbers are right together, or the letters over here, and the sentences are right together, and I can see what I need to see easier. So first, let's show parallel. So parallel, well, let me just write out the symbol. Parallel is slope. So slope we say m. So y minus y over x minus x equals 0 over negative 5, which is 0. The cd, the slope, Let's see, y minus y is 0 minus 0, and x minus x is 0 over 5, which is 0. So those two lines are parallel, and we could see that from the picture. Now, uh, congruent, we're going to use distance formula. And distance, I'm going to say, what's the distance between these x's? And that's 5. And the distance between the y's is 0. Um, which is the square root of 25, which is 5. Um, here, the distance between these two x's is 5. And those y's is 0. And we can see that we're getting the same thing. So check. They are both congruent. Check. They are both parallel. So yes, that is a parallelogram. So then it says, do the diagonals of the above quadrilateral bisect each other? Well, <clears throat> bisect 
means midpoint. So I need to know, if I draw this, if this point right here is the midpoint. So let's see, let's find the midpoint. So the midpoint of AC, well, I can use a, the, for midpoint, it's a capital M. And midpoint is X plus X. So the X of A is three and the X of C is five divided by two. The Y of A is two and the Y of C is zero. And I get four, one. And if I wrote these points here, sometimes it's easier to see. Three, two, B is at eight, two, C is at five, zero, and D is at zero, zero. So when I'm doing midpoint of AC, Right here, that x and that x, add them together, divide by 2, and then that y and that y, add them together and divide by 2. And now we're going to do B, BD. So BD, the midpoint, add the x's together, 8 and 0. Add the y's together, and I get 4, 1. So yes, they bisect each other. They go through the, the midpoint is on both of those lines. So the next thing it says, what kind of quadrilateral is the following? Well, let's, let it, the easiest thing to do is say one, two, three, four, five. That's five and that's five. And I can see that they're parallel. So I know that it's at least a parallelogram. But let's check the length because it could be a rhombus. I know it's not. Oh, uh, and let me write this. Not a rectangle. No 90 degree angles, right? No right angles. But it could be a rhombus. If it's a rhombus, all sides are congruent. So let's see. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. And do you remember what I told you about the three, four? You got it. Five triangle. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. And that side's five. So yes, it's a rhombus. Okay. If you don't remember the three, four, five triangle, then let's just pick one of these. Um, XW. The distance would be 3 squared Pythagorean theorem plus 4 squared, and that would give me the square root of 25, which is 5. All right, let's see. Two more. 
So it says use the diagonals. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, use the diagonals to determine whether a parallelogram with the given vertices is a rectangle, a rhombus, or square. Give all the names that apply. So what we're doing is we already know that it's a parallelogram. Now a rectangle is going to have um, right angles and right angles um, mean Perpendicular, right? Slopes. Um, let's let me write this over the side for a second. So, a rectangle. To find out if it's a rectangle, <clears throat> we need to check uh, slopes. Um, check slopes. Uh, if they are, if opposite reciprocals then yes, because that means right angles. Okay, rhombus check distance if all sides are congruent, then yes. It's rhombus. If both of those things are true, then it's a square. All right, so we already know it's a parallelogram. Let's check slopes. Well, let's check distance because, um, so we got KL, let's write down all the sides, KL, LM, MN, and NK. So distance. So the distance between the X's, negative 5 and negative 2, is 3. The distance between these Y's is 5, and we got a distance of um, 25 and 9 is 34. You can put that in your calculator and get a decimal if you want, doesn't matter. And then let's do, uh, let's go ahead and do um, slope. So I got my y's on top, y minus y over x minus x. And that was minus negative 2, which changes that to a positive 2. Minus negative 2 makes that a positive 2. And we get negative 5 over negative 3 which is positive 5 thirds. So now let's do LM. So distance, the distance between these two X's is five, and the distance between these two Y's is three. 
Well, I already know that that's going to be the same distance. Those are the same numbers, aren't they? And that will be the same. Let's see that the slope, the 4, y minus y on top, x minus x on bottom, and I get, let's see, positive 3 over negative 5, so negative 3 fifths. Well, those are opposite reciprocals, so there's a right angle right there. Mn. Uh, let's see, mn, so the distance between my x's is 3, and the distance between my y's is 5. Well, that's going to be the same distance. And then let's check, check slope. The distance, or the y minus y, so 1 minus negative 4 changes that to a plus sign, and then 3 minus 0 gives me 5 over 3, and then nk. Things are looking good for the rhombus and the slope. So the distance between these x's is 5. And the distance between these y's is 3. And again, that's the same length as the other ones. And then slope is going to be y minus y. So negative 1 minus negative 4 makes that a plus. And negative 5 minus 0 gives me 3 over negative 5 which is negative five-thirds. So let's look first. All these are the same. So all sides are congruent. Then over here, these two are parallel. Right, because they both are five thirds, and then these two are parallel, and those are opposite reciprocal slopes. So, um, perpendicular lines, so all right angles. So, this problem is a square, it's a give all the names that apply. So, it is a rectangle. It is a rhombus, and it is a square. All right, let's do the same thing. So I have PQ, I've got QR, I've got RS, and SP. If you guys want, you could actually stop this, do this problem, and then check back to see if you've got the right answer. So first we'll do distance. Distance between these x's um, is 6. Distance between these y's is 1. And then my slope would be y minus y over x minus x. I get 1 over negative 6. And then q, r, distance between these x's is 1. Distance between these y's is 6. And well, if I check slope, I've got y minus y over x minus x. I get 6 over 1. 
Oh, that's 6 over negative 1, so that's negative 6. Almost messed that one up. Um, then RS, distance between those threes is 6, and the distance between the x's is 1. And my slope, y minus y over x minus x, and I get negative 1 over 6. And then SP, the distance between these x's is 1. And the distance between these y's is 6. And my slope is y minus y over x minus x. And I get 6 over negative 1. Sorry about that. Um, and I get negative 6. All right, so all the sides are same. Um, all congruent sides. So that makes it a rhombus, right? So I got a rhombus here. So let's look at these uh, slopes. Now they're reciprocals, but they're all negative. So there are no right angles, so it cannot be a rectangle, and it cannot be a square. So, ta-da, there you have it. Those are long problems, but there's not many in the homework. So, I guess I'll see you in the video for module 10.5.